Hey everybody, welcome to another live writing session. Um, in case you don't know what's going on, also I gotta clean my glasses because I was just out in the rain, but basically I'm gonna go live here, I'm, I am live, and I'm just gonna write some music. I don't have any plans for a specific thing to write. Um, I'm just gonna start writing and see what happens and try to shape it into something like a song as I go. Um, I was just out in the rain to get cold before I have to sit under these hot lights. Um, and I got some raindrops on my glasses. There we go. Perfect. So, um, there are lots of different ways to write music. There's no one right way to do it. And I'm just going to guide you through um, a nice way to start if you've never written music before. So, I think what I'm going to start with is... I'm going to scoot over to my camera guitar. I'm going to grab my iPad, my whiteboard, and we're going to start by just quickly mapping out chords in a key. That's, there we go, this button. So, let's just start with the easiest key. And my guitar is a little quieter than I'd like, so that seems a little louder. Can y'all hear that okay? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna make a C scale. And um, excuse my funky handwriting. Um, basically, we'll just scoot these all close together. There we go. And the way a major scale works is we got whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. This is how you make a major scale. Here's our root note, and we got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I can't do both, here we go. There you go, that is a C major scale. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Right? So, if we wanna make this into a set of chords that we can actually use to make some music, the idea here is and I'm having a hard time hearing my guitar. It could be because my equipment is failing. That's a beetle? Wow, did you see that? A beetle just flew by. Wonder how you got in here, bud. I'm gonna have to get you out very carefully. So, here we have a C scale. Check out that circle in the top right corner. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The way we get the chords in a key is we just play every other note until we got three starting on every note of the scale. I got lessons about this on my Patreon if you want to learn more about it, but the idea here is we get a major chord, minor chord, minor chord, major chord, major chord, minor chord, diminished chord, and then we're back to a major chord, which is awesome. So if I go back to my whiteboard here, the chords in the key of C are C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. Those are the chords. So once you know what they are, you don't have to play them the weird way that I played them. So using this set of chords, what I like to do is just make a little, this represents a measure of, uh, or four measures. In other words, I can either think of this as one, two, one, two, or I can think of this as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again, excuse my ridiculously bad handwriting right now. Um, so if I were to just experiment by just plugging some chords in, here's C, here's D minor, here's A minor, here's F. Let's see how that sounds. And I'm going to pick any random strumming pattern I want. C, D minor, A minor, F. You could do a variety of things. You could go... That's kind of cool. 
I kind of like that. I'm going to stick with it. Um, and then, oh, I don't know what's going on. That bug really <laughs> threw me off. Uh, I, I had a hornet in here the other day, so it spooked me because I thought maybe it was a hornet. So anytime you're writing a chord progression, um, you can think, okay, my first section. Um, you could think, okay, I just made a section. We don't have to call it a chorus or a verse or anything yet, because when you're writing music, you don't have to know what it's going to be until you get into it a little bit further. And sometimes it turns into nothing. Um, just as a pause moment here, um, writing music isn't quite about start, like starting writing and f ending with a finished song. Most of the time what happens is you write a ton of just general stuff and then a small portion of that you go, hmm, it feels like this, these three out of ten things maybe could be a song. I, I like them and I feel like I could see how they, where they would go. And then of those three, maybe one or two of them actually become a finished song. And a lot of people don't know this and so they sit down to try writing music and they go, oh my gosh, I suck at writing music. And it's like, no, you don't suck. You just need to practice. Just like everything else on guitar, writing music takes practice. So if I want to come up with a second chord progression here, we've got... Sometimes a nice way to look at your second section is to see what chords you already used. C, D minor, A minor, F and maybe feature some of the chords you haven't used. We'll leave this guy out for now, but maybe maybe that chord will make an appearance later. So I think I'm gonna go G, F, E minor, um, G. Let's see how that sounds, I don't know. There we go. Now I've got a nice two-part thing here, and it sounds like... That by itself could actually be the chord progression for a whole verse or something. I don't know. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to this desk over here, and... I'm gonna get a guitar set up for uh, some recording software so that I can um, have a little more control over the sound because I think something's going on with my equipment that hasn't happened before today. Of course, it's always, you know, when you go, <laughs> when you go big, some funky stuff happens. So I'm gonna sneak into, this is the right button, to my recording software here. I'm gonna grab this guitar and we got a little, a little something going on here. Let me see. Um, I got enough gain, so I'm gonna do some sneaky stuff that you don't need to know about, but if you're using any recording software, uh, this is some, some, some stuff I like to do. And I'm starting to suspect that my headphones might be the issue, so I'm gonna switch out for some good, good headphones real quick here and see if that solves my problem. Do, 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 cue the, cue the clown music here. Let's see. So, uh-huh. I think what's going on is my voice is actually way too loud and everything else isn't loud enough. Maybe there it is. There we go. So, that's nice. That's a nicer balance, I think. Um, so what I'm going to do is try to record that little thing that was, what was it? It was, uh, C, D minor, A minor, F, G, F, E minor, G. And I'm going to practice it for a second here. Um, that's kind of cool. So, yeah, um, yeah, 
So uh, Phil O'Donohue actually just asked a great question. And while I grab my iPad, I'm going to answer it. Phil said, it's the old chicken or egg question. Which comes first, the melody or the lyrics? And for most songwriters, I would say there's sort of a cohesive kind of thing that goes on where a lot of really good lyricists um, will they'll have a book where they just keep tons of lyric ideas, just things that they've been thinking about in lyric form. And then when they sit down to write something like this, um, they'll already have some sense of, oh, the mood of this, you know, which I'm gonna find a tempo for it while I'm talking here. That's a little fast. That's probably still a little fast. Let's see. Let's see, and honestly, I'm not in love with this, but I'm gonna record it anyway, and we'll make a little something out of it, and then maybe I'll write something else. So I'm gonna turn my volume way down so I can really hear this metronome. And I'm gonna turn up the metronome. Yeah, I think I got a nice loop here. Yeah. I'm gonna roll some of that bass off. So, this could be really interesting. Um, where do I want to go with it? I, I think personally it would be more fun to write something with drums and bass and a little bit more of a beat, but let's just keep working this for a minute and see if we can come up with another second part for it that's kind of nice. So I add a little track. And I don't know. Here, I'll show you what I'm doing on guitar. Let's see. Let's see if we can make something nice out of this with a little melody and maybe I want a little more a little more reverb on my lead guitar here let's see here we go so I'm gonna go let's see I don't know <laughs> There's some funny little melody ideas, but sometimes this just by itself, you know, um, it's not admitting defeat to say, hmm, I don't know, I don't love this. It's There's something nice about it. I don't hate it. But... I'd rather write something in a minor key today. I'm feeling like I'm in a little bit more of a minor key mood, so we'll let that one be what it is. If you all like it, I'll save it, and then I'll move on to something else, because this is sometimes, you know, I don't have a specific goal. I just want to write something, and I want it to be cool. And this is nice, and nice is good, but I want to write something cool. So that's a fantastic way, by the way, to start writing something. Um, another really fun way to start writing something is to get out your old um, MIDI controller and make a beat first. And I really like making beats. Um, I'll make something quick if I can. Ooh, that's a nice kick drum. Let's see. That's kind of fun. Oh, I don't know about that. Liverpool? I kind of like this Motown kick. Right? It's kind of a little more fun like that, you know? Okay, so let's find a good tempo for our beat here. Uh, 
Okay. Let's see. So if you if you weren't um, if you weren't a nerd like me and you can't uh, you know play you can't play a beat. Right. Um, you can always type a beat in, which I can show you how to do by basically fixing this beat. But here's what I want to do. I'm going to go R, and then I'll pause. Oh, we're going this fast. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's pretty fast. Here's my little beat here. I'm gonna hit Q to make sure that the beat is perfect because um, I just, I'm not a drummer and I'm not gonna sit here all night trying to make the timing perfect so I can push a button that will just make the timing perfect. Here's how I played it. Here's perfect. Not perfect, perfect. We could do it slightly less than perfect too if we want, but whatever. That's a nice beat. Right? So we can go in here, when you're using MIDI software, um, it doesn't really record audio the way like a voice memo or uh, a regular recording. You can actually change things however you want after the fact with MIDI, which I love. So like I can come in here, I can add a little ghost note right here. So now it goes. And I could do a little, a little open hi-hat like this. And now we've got a little beat. I think that's pretty cool. So I think what I want to do from here is I'll go back over to the camera guitar and we will just focus on the relative minor. Oh, now I can hear the guitar really well. So guess what? C major and A minor. Use all the same notes and that means Oh, all the same chords too. We got A minor, we got B diminished, we got C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, and we're back to A minor. So, if we play this beat, let's see. I'll get my iPad so you can see our list of chords here. But this gives us a little more energy. I don't want to fall asleep during the live stream, you know, I got to have a little more energetic tune here. So let's see. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's our set of chords in the key of C. I'm going to copy them and paste them down here to show you. If I take these two and I put them at the front a little better, there we go. Now we've got the chords in the key of A minor. <laughs> A minor and C major are relative, relative major and minor of each other. Um, and that means that they share all the same notes and therefore they share all the same chords. Um, there are other things you can do, but if I want to play a one, four, five chord progression in A minor, um, well, here's all the chords right here. Roman numerals always represent chords. so. Here's the one chord, the two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord. So I'm going to take a couple chords and I'm going to find something I like here. Let's see. And I think I will. Here's an A minor. Let's just see how an A minor sounds over this track. That's pretty nice. I like that a lot. What I just played was, um, I'm going back to my grid here. 
A minor, G, C. There we go. That's kind of cool. I'm playing it a little sloppy because I'm just writing music. I think that's a cool section. Let me, let me see if I can come up with some chords for another section here. Um, that's kind of cool. That's kind of fun. Um, I did F and then C and then we used this funky chord, which I just added the seven to it. Um, if you ever want to play a B half diminished chord, basically here, let's get a little nerdy for a sec. I think I remember what I played. This is a B half diminished chord. Um, it's basically the seventh chord version of, uh oh, of course my iPad stopped working now. Well, there you go. Looks like this. Um, but yeah, literally iPad just froze, so that's okay. These kinds of things happen. It's a live stream. We had my headphones stop working and then we had my iPad stop working. Let's just record. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop back in my software here and I'm gonna add an audio track and I think I'm going to go for my favorite sort of Nile Rodgers kind of sound. And it's funny because as I'm saying that, it really is one of my favorite sounds, but I don't have, I don't have a go-to way to get that sound on my, on my uh, software here. I always make it up as I go. So I'm going to do an amp, but I think I'm going to do something like, Let's see if this kind of does it. What do we have here? Hey, that's pretty nice actually. That's that's most of the way there. Um, and then I'm gonna throw a limiter on there. Sorry if I'm blasting anyone's ears. Not my intention, but we got a little something. That's pretty cool. I like that tone. That's too much gain, but let's record that. Let's record that beat. And if I remember correctly, which my iPad just broke down for some reason, so we got A minor, G, and C. And, you know, if I can't, if, I think what I'd rather do, which is more organic for me and then quicker overall, and then I'll, sh I'm gonna come up with a couple different voicings because A minor, G, and C, there are many ways to play this all over the neck. I could play... Right? It's kind of fun. Um, so, I, I might tinker a bit, and I'll, it'll probably be kind of sloppy, just, just so you know. Um, because, guess what? Writing music is not performing music. It's sloppy, it's messy. Sometimes you you play some wrong notes because it's how could you possibly practice something that you're just writing? So normal part of the process is to be sloppy and messy. I'll, I'll try to play nice for fun anyway, but because it's a fun challenge, but it's probably going to be sloppy. Let's see. Um. I got something I like. Um, the tone is not as nice as I want, um, which doesn't always matter when you're writing, but it's kind of fun to mess with a little bit. Oh no, it is nice.
That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, so I'm going to keep it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to remember that other section, which um, I believe was F, B half diminished to E minor, F to C to B. We'll find out. Um, but what I want to do here is because I'm trying to create two distinct sections of a song, this one I think I could loop a bit. Um, and if it gets a little boring without a melody, maybe I can change the chord progression a little bit, but I think it's going to sound pretty nice to have two sections of this. Right? That's pretty cool. So what I want to do now is I want to either bring this section down or up. I think I want to bring it down. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, um, I'm going to remove half the beats so that we have some dynamic difference. Let's see how this sounds. That's kind of cool, actually. It, it's uh, um, what I really like about messing with about messing with dynamics in a song is um, it's it's a little bit like like doing a thing where you go um, you know this really cool thing happened to me the other day you're not gonna believe this like when you get quiet in a section of a song it just kind of makes you go oh wait what's going on here and um, if a song's like the same intensity the whole time sometimes it's like uh, that you can kind of acclimate to it and get used to it. But when you have a section of a song that just brings it in, suddenly you kind of go, oh, tell me more. Um, it's kind of fun. And sometimes you can bring down the intensity by removing beats. Sometimes you can bring the intensity down just by playing softer. So like this. Right? And if I were to bring the intensity down with the guitar as well, that would mean instead of strumming a lot, I might do some um, softer strums. That's kind of cool. Yeah, let's try that. Um, let's see what we can do. Yeah, I, I like the hard strums better. I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, I think I need to make that a little double section because I can hear a chord progression that would end that way, but it wouldn't have that thing in the middle that I just did, this little... So I'm gonna do a double version of what I just did. And then the other thing is, if I'm playing down low like this, um, which I did change the progression a little bit because I like the sound of F, B half diminished, a minor, um, C, and then F, B half diminished, A minor to E minor. But if I play it down low, the more bass notes I play, the less space I give an actual bass player to do something cool. So I think what I would rather do is either try to just play on high strings, um, um, which Sometimes I forget uh, how to play. I could do that, that's kind of cool. There we go. This is a cool version of, a, of this half diminished chord. Um, and this is the power of chord voicings, which is when you're playing all the same notes, but you're putting them in different places. Here I've got B, F, A, and D. And that gives you a certain kind of sound. But here I have um, F, A, uh, what is it? D, A, B, 
F, D, A, B, F, and that's a cool sound. And if I play an F major seven beforehand, that's kind of cool. Uh, I like that. And then I gotta. That's kind of cool. So I'm gonna try that. Let's see if it actually works. I already forgot how to play it. <laughs> Hang on a sec. F. This happens when you're writing. Uh, it takes, sometimes you gotta practice stuff. That's normal. And then we got, that's what I'm gonna do. And then A minor to C. And now you can't always recognize the chords you're playing without those bass notes. With the bass notes, you get this very clear. All right. But I'm gonna save room for the bass player. And um, so I'm gonna play these chords so that so that I leave room for that bass player later, which <laughs> it's gonna be me playing bass later. So I wanna be nice to myself later, basically. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Um, and uh, here we go. I think I like that. So, let's see how that sounds. And I haven't added a melody yet, I haven't added a bass line, I don't even know what I'm gonna do for a melody yet. I don't have to know, that's okay. I just wanna hear how these sections crash into each other. And maybe while I do that, I will show you what I played on the camera guitar, and I'll just mute the volume on the camera guitar so it doesn't inter interact weirdly. Excuse me. I shouldn't drink bubbly drinks while I'm live streaming. Let's see, my iPad is still, <laughs> still frozen. That's so funny. It's been, it's been acting funny lately, but I guess it died during a live stream, of course. Why wouldn't it? So, I forgot to, oh, it's muted. It's just gonna come through a little bit. So, here's what I played. And then I went here. And then down to here. And then I went. And then I went. And then I went to a C chord. And then I'm back to F major seven. B half diminished. A minor. And then I went up to this E minor. And you know this is an E minor because well, you might not. That's what I'm trying to explain. This is an E minor because all I'm using is E, G, and B. The definition of an E minor chord is not a shape that you play on the guitar, but it's the notes that the chord is made of. And this is why learning a little music theory gives you so much room for creativity. Because if an E minor chord is just E, G, and B, man, there are so many places you can play that. So, I like this. I could try some melody stuff. I love writing melodies. Um, but I think it would be much more satisfying to play bass first, because I also love bass, and it's really fun to write a melody to a track that feels a little more finished. Um, not that we're gonna well, maybe we'll finish this tonight, who knows? I really didn't come with a specific agenda. I just uh, I just feel like I wanna preach the gospel of writing music. It's so fun. Um, of course it takes practice to get to a point where you can like live stream simultaneously. <laughs> it takes definitely takes practice, but... Gosh, that feels nice. I miss this guy. Okay, okay, okay. I've missed you. 
I've been playing my little blue bass over in the corner for a while, um, which I also love. This little, uh, this blue bass right here is a music man, and uh, I got it, I think, last year, the year before, and this one has been neglected, but I forgot how much I love it. So I'm gonna set it up real nice to record some good chunky bass. And um, uh, all I really need is to just throw some nice compression on here. We'll hit a high ratio. We'll do uh, somewhere around here with the attack and we'll do instant release and we'll see. And I, f I remember now why. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a little more gain. I switched pickups, but man, I love this thing. This pickup. So here's the cool thing about these old Music Master basses. They were just using a guitar pickup basically, which is gnarly. I think I want to do this. That's kind of nice. Okay. And then of course, I gotta get it in tune real quick. So one of my favorite things to do on bass is to make sure that I'm tuning an open string and then also making sure that if I fret something that that's also in tune or as close to in tune as it can be. Because sometimes I've noticed, especially with basses, even if you have uh, the intonation set where the, the 12th fret, you know, intonation is good, sometimes, sometimes stuff just gets kind of wonky. Okay, so I like to tune to the area that I'm probably going to be playing if it's a real problem, and then I'll just try to evenly tune everywhere if it's like a minor problem. So I'm gonna go a section at a time because I don't even remember what I played. And I'll start with the section I just played because it's probably gonna be a much simpler bass line. Yeah. So, those are the chords, F, B, A, C, F, B, A, E, and I could do a, a fun slidey thing like that. Um, roots and fifths are really nice to play on bass. But I don't know, let's see. I'm gonna mess with it. Uh, that's kind of nice, but I want to try something different. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep it simple. Yeah, that's a little tricky. Try. Uh, 
Kenneth said walk on the third though. I actually, let's see. That, that could be kind of cool actually to go F, A. So root third for the F chord and then um, yeah, okay, I, I'm gonna try that actually, that's cool. I'm gonna go. Uh, what, did I, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go F, G, A, B, D, A, B, C, E, F, G, A, B, D, A, Okay, I'm, I got an idea. Let's try it. Ah, I forgot what I was doing. I, I, okay, I like it though. I got the first half. I'm gonna I'm gonna record each each section because I'm forgetting. So we got. So that's the first half. Now I gotta record the second half, which goes. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, so I got those parts. Let's see if they're they're too sloppy. They're certainly too loud. Good. Making my ears bleed. Yeah. I'm remembering why this bass isn't doing it for me quite as much. I don't, I, I, I wish I chose the other pickup, but whatever. Now we're, now we'll do the fun, the, the, the fun upbeat section. <sighs> what is it? I don't know, that's something. Now I gotta, I gotta do some mixing here before my thing, before my computer freaks out. So hang on a sec here. These drums are too, they're too out of control. So I'm gonna just get them under a little bit of control here. Nothing crazy. I love the quiet section. And then I'm gonna turn it down a little bit and then I'm gonna mix the bass into the drums, but I think part of my problem with the bass is it doesn't have a distinct enough tone for me, and it's it just feels kind of feels a little flat. So I'm gonna try to put it through a little fake amp here and see if that helps. That helps already.
And now I'll get the... I like that tone better. Let's see if we can mix it. Also, if you got any questions, fire them off in the chat and I'll take a little question break in a second here. I like that I like that tone better and now I'm going to mix the guitar to one side just a little I like that Yeah. That's kind of cool. So I think I might try writing a melody over that. But first, um, I could double the guitar, Kayo, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I need to today. So let me just search for any questions that might have come up when I wasn't paying attention to the chat. And I'll try to pay better attention from now on. Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and uh, I just want to encourage you to write music because you're missing out if you're not writing music. It's the most fun thing ever. I, I don't even learn songs very often. I just write music, it's so fun. So Pete says, do you ever use comping between tracks? I do it all the time. If you don't know what comping is, um, I did kind of a lazy version of it here but essentially comping is when you have multiple takes and you go, well, I'm gonna take the first part of this. I'm gonna take these beats from take seven. And then I'm gonna take this beat from take nine like this. And that's that's called comping is when you're when you're sort of taking little pieces from different takes. So we got take seven, take eight, take ten, and take nine are all mixed in on this one bass line. And this is how all the pros do it. Um, I I'm not a hundred percent positive about this, but I'm pretty sure um, it used to be that they had different takes on different rolls of tape, and they would practice getting the take they want by turning the volume down on this one and turning it up on this one really quick to get all the phrasing they wanted on older recordings. Now you can do it a bit easier with software, but um, but yeah, that's called comping. Um, it's just taking a bunch of different tracks and picking your favorite parts. It's kind of fun. Um, so Elvis Titus says, curious what audio interface you use. And I use, um, currently I was trying to find one that that felt like it would last me the rest of my life. So I have this one by Cranborn Audio, um, and I think it's called the 500R. It's got these little slots here for 500 series preamps or effects, and um, part of the reason I got it is uh, I didn't want to be reliant on any software-based pieces of hardware, and a lot of audio interfaces right now um, they have sort of software that's part of the way they work. And when that software stops working, they won't work anymore. And I, that kind of freaked me out. And so I wanted a piece of hardware that it just, I don't even, I think it's just USB 2.0. It's a very simple thing. It's, it's, um, but it's very expandable. I can add with ADAT, I can add, uh, I can have up to 24 or 26 tracks eventually when I when I have space for that. Um, but yeah, I love that interface. It's my favorite I've ever used so far, um, even though it uh, looks like 
a knob fell off one of my 500 series. <laughs> that's okay. That's I just haven't put it back yet. Um, so let's see other questions, and then we'll get back into writing music. If you've got them, throw them on. Uh, Lauren, yes, um, this is the Akai LPK25. Where does it say that? It says it right there. Also says it right here. Akai LPK25. I love this little keyboard. For me, a non-keyboard player that just wants to put in drums and the occasional simple um, keyboard stuff, it's awesome. So then, let's see, Randy says, are all of the different amps and effects part of Logic Pro software, or are they purchased separately? I joined your Patreon last week, and I love it. Randy, welcome to my Patreon. Thanks for being a member. I hope you're learning a lot while you're there. For the rest of you, I, got, I do a live stream like this once a week where I answer absolutely every question my patrons ask. And um, I've got a huge backlog of lessons where you can learn recording software and whatnot. But your question was, are all the different amps and effects part of Logic Pro software? Yes. Currently, the way that I'm using Logic, um, I have previously owned all kinds of effects, but right now I'm using just what comes with Logic. And honestly, for my workflow right now, which is mainly using this to write songs and then take what I've written to a, a band or to a recording studio to sort of flesh out the parts uh, there. It works perfectly for me. Um, I have done some professional recordings with Logic Pro as well. It's a fantastic software. I love it. Um, Josh Johan says, if you add a solo, would you explain how you chose which keys slash notes you're playing over the rhythm guitar's chords? Totally. Galen Maynard um, asked, do you ever do vocals on these? Yeah, I'm going to try some vocals on this today. We'll see how it happens. Um, any other questions? Nom says, hi, Scott. Any tips for perfectionists who find it easier to start a new song than to go back and edit? ideas they're not too hot on, but still want to finish. Nam, um, I would actually say it this way. Um, you want to have a boneyard. You want to have a big pile of stuff like this that may never become a full song. Um, because uh, sort of like there's practicing guitar and then there's practicing like a religion. And songwriting is much more like a religion in the sense that um, practicing means that uh, you're doing it regularly, you're actively participating, you're making it part of your lifestyle. You have some sense of like ritual and ceremony around doing it regularly and kind of cre <laughs> creating like a sacred space almost for yourself to, to just regularly do this stuff. So most of the time your songs that you start like this don't need to end up as a finished song in order for you to get better at songwriting. Of course, you got to take ideas like this and I'll show you um, I'll show you how I would take this and turn it into a full song. I think I like this enough that I'll definitely do that um, if we got we got time. Who am I kidding? Um, so yeah, totally. Um, any other questions here before I move on? Daniel says, any new Hot Bodies in Motion songs hitting the airwaves soon? And the answer to that, that's my band, Hot Bodies in Motion. I know it's a ridiculous name, but we are, we're keeping it. Um, we, we have some songs that we're working on, um, and we were going to release them sooner, but we kind of were trying to do the, uh, the whole studio band thing, and just recently decided, nope, we got to find a drummer and bass player and play some shows. So um, we've switched gears and we still have those songs and we're still going to finish them up, but we're also going to start doing some regular rehearsals and um, that'll, that'll make recording a lot more fun. Because my favorite thing is to rehearse songs with the band a bunch, then get in the studio and do sort of a, the, the dope recording of it. Um, yeah, whereas the way I'm writing right now is how a lot of pop stars would um, would just like record a whole song, which is a cool way to do it too, but it get you end up with a different result. So let's see. Um, 
Gizmo channel says, could you do chord over scale? Um, I don't know quite what you mean by that, but um, if you can explain it, sure. Caesar says, have you read The Creative Act by Rick Rubin? Um, no, I haven't. Should I? I'll have, I'll have to check it out. I'd love to meet Rick Rubin. I want to talk to him. I want to see what, what, what Rick's deal is. So what I'm going to do now is I'll set up a little vocal track here and we'll see, we'll see if any ideas come to mind. This is a definitely a little bit more vulnerable, um, but I'll just put some fun effects on here. Let me mute myself so you can hear. Check. Oh, that's very quiet right now. Check. 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 Okay, give me a sec. You can't hear me very well, but you will hear me very well. Once I do this, fast attack, fast release, somewhere around here. Check, 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 check. You know, I think this mic is, oh yeah, this mic is messed up. I see. Let me get a better mic. One sec. I'm going to get a better mic, okay? That one is not, it's like everything's breaking today. But I have a pretty cool mic over here. Where'd you go? There you are. This is a very nice little mic. So, although I got to say, let's use the, the pod mic. Oh no, I remember. This one needs a, a funky cable, so hang on a sec here. What am I doing? Okay. And you can keep firing off questions, and I'll just take a break soon, and I'll get to your next set of questions. Okay? Oh, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to teach and ask, answer questions. Otherwise, what's the point of doing this live, you know? All right, let me set up this microphone here. Check. Aha. I, I think something's being weird. Okay. Oh, let's see. Okay. Oh. <laughs> check, check, check my everything. Oh. I feel like my ears are getting blasted. Oh, but if that's not happening to you, then we're fine. So I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw my voice into the same. Check, check. Is it the microphone cable? No, it's not. What's going on, man? Okay, oh. Yeah, that is the right mic. Well, ah, let's see here. Check. I see. I was. I missed a key feature here. Check. Oh. 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 Well, let's see what happens. Can you hear me? Oh, I know what's happening. I just realized what's happening. I have a setting that I have to fix real quick here. And, aha, everything was weird. So, give me a sec here. Ready? We're going to fix everything. I was wondering why my levels were weird. Now they're back to normal, so give me a sec here. Here's my voice. Now it feels crazy loud to me. So I'm gonna turn it down. Can you hear me? Oh, I know what's happening. How's that sound to everybody? There we go. We had some weird issues and uh, live streaming, live streaming is crazy because you can be so prepared and then just some weird stuff will happen. And then you'll be like, why can't I hear myself? And then suddenly, an hour into the stream, you realize just one knob was just turned 
wrong. Just one knob was turned wrong. So now, if the volume is not blasting you, um, which hopefully your ear's not being blasted right now, I'm gonna... Now I can hear this better. And I like it, and I'm happy about that. And when I hit this button, this magic button, and I mute my other microphone, now I can hear myself much better. Wow. That's all it took. Check. And now we've got some beautiful check. Check. Oh, check. Check. Yeah. There we go. Let's just let's see if we can come up with some kind of a melody here, okay? Yeah. Um Robophonic, you're exactly right. Just one knob was tuned wrong. I can't hear myself very well. But hey, we're trying. So I'm I don't like this vocal tone at all. This is ugly. Let's do something nice. Now that we know what the problem, we, now that we all know my problems, now that we all know what I did wrong, which is great, um, now I'm going to make it sound nice to me. Check. 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 Ha 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 ha. He he he. Okay. That's better. I forgot how bassy this microphone is, so I'm gonna turn up some little sizzly high frequencies here, and I think I'm gonna do a little check, check, that's much nicer, yeah. And then just for fun, um, maybe I'll throw a little delay on there so that we got something weird. How about a little tape delay? Let's see if this is too intense. Too intense? Too intense? Yes. Yes. Extremely. Extremely. Extremely intense. intense. More feedback. More feedback. <laughs> oh, hey, I forgot that I'm live streaming to 400,000 people. My bad. I'll take this more seriously. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Okay. No. Yeah. That's better. Check, 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 check. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna listen first. One knob was tuned wrong, and I don't care about this melody. It's way too proper. I don't know. <laughs> This makes it feel a little more intimate, doesn't it? Um, wow, I'm not gonna do that to you. Uh, so, now that we did this. Hang on a sec. Where did my mouse go? I got too many freaking monitors. Okay, so now that I did try something, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make something up on guitar because I don't like anything that I've come up with so far. And I know that I can come up with something better, um, so I'm just gonna do it, and gosh darn it, I bet that everything's gonna work the way I expect it to now, let's see. Let's see, yeah. Now I can hear really well, and hopefully you can too. So, I'm gonna write a melody, and here's a really cool thing. Mm, yeah, we're gonna do it on a camera guitar. Can't help it. So, anytime, anytime you're writing a melody and you're singing, there's a really important thing that can either make you feel really bad if you don't know what you're doing, um, and it can make you feel really good if you know what you're doing. Wow, what a long way for me to say nothing. Um, here's the deal. Vocal range in other words, how high or low you can comfortably sing has a massive impact on your ability to write melodies um, that, that feel really good for you to sing. For example, 
Um, it is pretty late in my office and I don't think anyone's around, so I may end up yelling tonight, but if you take a simple C scale here, we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Generally speaking, my personal vocal range is I'm comfortable singing a C, and then when we start getting lower, I can't I can't sing an A very comfortably. I don't have a very deep voice. Um, <clears throat> so C is a nice, comfortable low note for me. And then as I start getting higher, um, and you can do this at home as well, finding your vocal range can be a game changer for writing melodies, even just pitching songs in the right key for your voice. A lot of people think they're a bad singer and it's, no, you just don't know your range and you gotta get your range in there. So let's see, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C, I can sing comfortably. D, I gotta start yelling, and then E is not gonna sound very good. So what I wanna do in this melody is only sing an E if I really have to or if I have to yell. So I'm gonna try to find some notes in here that feel better for my voice. And I'm actually gonna find my mouse again, which keeps disappearing. And I'm just gonna focus in on my A minor chords here. So, let's see. Here's my A minor chord. So if I go. That's a nice melody. So I can go. C, B, A, E. And now I've got a nice phrase. C, B, A, A, E. Na, 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 na. That's kind of cool. And what I'm doing here, by the way, the reason I outlined the actual notes in the chord is the way you write melodies usually is to start on a chord tone and then walk either. If you're gonna walk, you gotta walk to another chord tone. C, B, A. And then I just jumped down to E, another chord tone, which if you're gonna jump, jump to a chord tone. So I got C, B, A, A, E, E, F, G, A. That could be two little phrases over this A minor. Let's see. So I got C, B, A, E, E, F, G, A. That works, but it is a little too proper, I agree. Um, I might instead want to go uh, uh, uh. Um, and the other thing is, I only got two bars, and this is two bars. Na, na, na. So what I might do instead is, I just might keep that as my first phrase. Na, 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 na. And then my next two phrase, which is uh, two chords, uh, which would be, what are my two chords? They're G and C, which we got, here's our G chord right here, here's our C chord. So we got na 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 na. And now we've got, we're starting on a G chord. Na na na. Na na na. Uh, what we got? Na. So here again, I'm starting on a note in the G chord now. Na 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 na. Na. I don't know. I don't like that. Let's try it. Na -na. I don't have much space, so I gotta go. Na -na. Na -na 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 -na. Oh, what does that sound like? That's all I have time for. Let's say. That works. So, na 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 na, but I'm So we got. So the way I like to write melodies, which by the way, what we just wrote, we. Hi. What we just wrote takes up uh, four measures. So if we repeat it here and change it a little bit the second time, we've have got a really nice little melody going. So we got 
na 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 ba da 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 na 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 ma na 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 ba na 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 so the second time around what i want to do is a slightly different melody because oh wrong button excuse me when you repeat things um for example, I'm calling this my A melody, na 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 na, and then I'm calling this my B melody. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. When you only have an A and a B, if you just repeat them, you can you can do that, but the listener starts to assume that you're going to repeat things. So if you change it a little bit the second time through, um, it kind of helps people lean in a little bit. So if we've got ba -da -da -da, Ba ba da 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 ba da da uh na 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 ha ha something like that you know I don't know um I I'm gonna try to record that we'll see what happens um and uh, wish me luck I'm gonna need it writing songs live is always a weird thing here we go I'm gonna mute myself. Hello. No, 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 no. It's too fun to mess with mics. Na 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 na. Na 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 That's kind of cool. So one of my favorite things to do to make it feel, I don't know, this is like a clown music, what's going on? There we go. Now you've got my regular voice. Um, this works really nice. Sometimes a melody like this, if you just put sort of fake words to it, um, for example, uh, let me find a Wikipedia article here. It's one of my favorite tricks here. Um, I don't know, let's do Fender guitar. So, now I've, I'm just looking at random words on this Wikipedia article. Um, and I've got headstock logo. Um, yeah, I don't know. Amplifiers became stan... Like, it's not even real words, but there's something about putting... Um, like wordy sounding stuff um, in your uh, in your song that just suddenly makes it feel like oh I see how this could be a song yeah scrambled eggs exactly so if we've got you know some random words in there I'll I'll try we'll see what happens um, let's do it California hoping someday I'd get lost. In the forest I found that beetle that was flying California Found the beetle that was lost California Trees are coming, don't get lost So, something like that. It's fine. I don't know. It, it works. Um, and we've got uh, it's a start. Can you take me seriously with this delay, echo, reverb thing? I don't think so. Um, Mini Cooper, yeah. So then... In California Found the beetle that was lost California <laughs> Yeah. I really did find that... Oh. Yeah, I found that beetle. It's, uh, I can't remember what kind of beetle it is, but, uh, he's just climbing on my light. Man, that really freaked me out earlier. This has been quite a, quite a, a stream, a lot of firsts. Um, things just breaking down, and we're making it work. Let's 
Let's see if we can find something for the next section here. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Winging it. <clears throat> oh, no, I can't. Uh, wow, that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. It's funny, because the more you do this, sometimes, like, I, I mean, you may or may not believe me. Sometimes, most of the time, I feel like I can come up with something pretty quickly, but um, not today. That's how it goes. Uh, uh, even if you're really well uh, practiced songwriter, sometimes you can't think of a melody very quickly and you gotta use your guitar for help. So now I'm gonna go. Ah, na, na, na. What do we got? Na, 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 na. Na, na, na. Ah. I like something like that. Bum, 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 bum. I'm actually kind of mimicking the bass a little bit there. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's actually kind of cool if I can mimic the bass, to be honest. That, because the bass line is nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually mimic the bass line. I want to see how that sounds. Let's see here. Kind of cool. I should have seen you and I. Doesn't have to be exact. I should have seen you. Come. That's kind of fun. Oh, let me sleep in. I've been a stranger in this town. Let me sleep in. Let's hear, the, let's hear this whole thing. You can't hear me. You can't hear me very well. There we go. Let's hear this whole thing. I'm not in love with it, but it's fun. It's always fun to write music, even if it doesn't turn out magically the way you want it to every time. That's totally fine. And I, I, like, I like it. I just am not in love, in love with it, you know? So let's see. In California Found the beetle that was lost <laughs> The Beatles. <laughs> Trees are coming, don't get lost. I've been a stranger. I've been sleeping in this town. In a stranger way. In California. So, because of my takes here, this is a good time to go back and do a little comping to just get rid of that first. There we go. Now we have a nice little... California. And then what's our ending here? Let's see. Let's see if this actually... Trees are coming. Uh, uh. I've been a stranger. I've been sleeping in this town. So now, kind of cool, kind of fun. Yeah, I'm having a good time. I hope you're having a good time. Um, I don't see any more questions, so I'm just gonna keep going through, but if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah. Yep, cool, cool. Uh, also, I'm gonna pause to say, hey, um, if you are feeling like you're getting something out of this and you want to learn how to do this yourself, it's kind of like, I guess at this point, I've been teaching guitar since I was like 14 years old and this is my favorite thing to do and it's my favorite thing to help other people learn how to do and it's the thing that I want my 
online school to be about. I do have some lessons in there about the cage system, about soloing. I can totally do a guitar solo over this um, and talk about the note choices that I would make, which I'll do as well. But this kind of stuff, just like making music, is so awesome. Um, so Elvis says, any tips on the transitions? Like when you went from the A part to the B part? I usually have trouble with that. Yeah, I mean, it, the transitions are tricky. Um, let's work on it. L let's work on it together, because I think the next step that I want to do with this song is to arrange it into what if it was a real song, basically. Because um, it could be. So I feel like my sections here are a little short. For example, if this was supposed to be verse, chorus, verse, chorus, we are only at a minute long with a uh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. And if I was going to just do a stand in for a bridge chorus, chorus like this, this is, uh, this would be an extremely short minute and 43 seconds song. So I might want to rethink if, if I want to double this section and add something in there to make it more interesting, or if I want to add maybe the second half of this section is a little pre-chorus, or maybe this is the pre-chorus and then we just haven't written a chorus yet. Uh, I'm going to listen to it as if this is a verse and a pre-chorus. California Found the beetle that was lost California <laughs> Trees are coming uh, uh. I've been a stranger I've been sleeping in this town In a stranger way I actually think this could work really well as a verse pre-chorus section like this um, I, th I think that's a pretty cool idea. So in that case, maybe I need to write a chorus. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my beat here and I'm going to see how I can make it bigger. Um, Robophonic, my voice probably could go up to E on sleeping in this town, but I don't want to do it too high. Also, Daniel um, had a really good question, which is, do you ever write lyrics without a backing track? Yeah, totally. Um, but I will say, uh, if you have these kind of dummy, these are dummy lyrics, these are not real lyrics. Don't look into them, don't take them seriously. I literally looked up and saw a beetle on my light and I was singing about it. But I would, what I love about dummy lyrics is they give you an easy way to look at the meter of your song and what I mean by that is um, let me let me see what these lyrics even are I forgot um, well okay I know the sec the the second section right um, let's go to my little notes in logic pro here so if I go I've been a stranger I've been uh, sleeping in this town. Hey, look, it's a Christmas song in a manger. Um, but these lyrics are absolutely meaningless. But if we count the syllables, one, I've been a stranger, that's five. And then this one is, I've been a-sleeping uh, in this town. I've been a-sleeping uh, in this town. That's eight. I'm a stranger now. That's five. So for a chorus, you could find a five-syllable phrase. Um, you could, you know, this is where you get to play around on paper without the song. You could go, oh, I'm in danger. Um, how could I keep you, uh, going 
round. I don't know, like that's also meaningless, but you see how I'm just taking the same meter and kind of making a new chorus. Like the idea here is that once you get your syllables, that helps you do it on paper much better, much easier. It's really nice. Um, so I, I strongly recommend that. Um, yeah, so uh, that that's, all I'm trying to say is that's the power of lyrics right there. But I wanna, I wanna try to write a little chorus here, let's see. So, So if we've got this section that's kind of constant, and we got this section, I've been a stranger. and it kind of brings it down, maybe this section can be a little more dancey, a little more upbeat or something. And I think I'm gonna get my bass plugged back in here and see what I can do. So. Come here, bass. I forgot what input my bass was in. Was it this one? Yeah, Chris McCullough. Scratch vocal track is very handy just for, just for being able to screw around and have some sense of, uh, you know, the lyrics could sound like this if I wrote real words but right now they're just very much placeholder just to sound good. So I'm just gonna mess around and go. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But, hmm. That's better. I like that. I kind of like that, and here's what I'm picturing. I'm picturing um, some guitar that's kind of doing stabs. And then, um, so we kind of have a mix of both sections where our first section is pretty constant, and then our second section has those just, uh, uh, like the sustained chords. But if we have a little, uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then I, I might actually double that riff with another guitar so it feels a little thicker. Uh, let's see here, let's try this. So I'm gonna go. Basically what I'm doing is I got an A minor and I'm trying to decide if I want to go and then come in on 
I kind of like that. Hey. That's kind of cool, but it's a lot of space and it's kind of scary to have that much space for a vocalist. But also, it's cool to have that much space for a vocalist because that gives you room to go. Oh no, I'm trying not to find you. Which I think that's something, there's something in there that's pretty cool. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, I wanna double, I wanna double that bass line with a kind of grittier guitar. Um, because that's gonna really beef up that that tone and make it feel a little more chorusy because it's just a little thicker. It's also gonna make the bass line feel more important, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know if a fuzz pedal is right. Let's see what this guy does. Come on. Oh, it's very farty. There you go. All right, that's kind of cool. I'm gonna turn this level down. I'm gonna drive it way much. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Let's see if that does it. Uh, yeah. Cool, I like that, I'll take it. Um, and then, now we've got some sections. <laughs> I love space in a song. Um, yeah, yeah, this is, I kinda like that. Okay, 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 so here's what we're doing now. We've got this stuff here. And I know I want two of these. And honestly, I love choruses that are like too short, because then you're like, God, it's gone already. I want, I want to hear it again. And then that makes them listen to the next verse. In my humble opinion. Let's see. Um, I am gonna pan that on the other side though, so we got, yeah, that's nice. I think that's sick, honestly. Now all I wanna do is um, see if the, the drum part could be any bigger. Oh, hang on a sec. Um, I don't know if it can. I don't think we want... Maybe we have a little a crash at the end, like this. Let's see. I think we need that, the crashes to happen on those ba da ba ba Yeah, like this. So now we've got this. That's pretty cool. I, I like it. <laughs> Who 
Who said, who said cowbell? Who's got a fever right now? Who's, who's got a freaking fever? I think what I'd rather do is, is just do some, uh, some tambourine. However, this is where it's kind of a cheat, but honestly, sometimes when it works, it works so well. There's freaking tambourine loops in here, and when they're sick, they're so sick. That's not the one. I like the recordings. I don't know, let's see. Honestly, that's sick. I'm gonna put it in. And then um, now we've got, uh, honestly, it's, it's a pretty sick chorus. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna pan it a little bit to a funky direction like this. And then I think what I'm gonna have to do is, I think I need a little cool down section at the end of the chorus. I just have a hunch I will, but I don't know what I need. So let's just throw some vocals in there, and see what happens. Um, this is another thing that actually happens to me pretty often, by the way, is I'll write a song and I'll be like, eh, it's kind of cool. And then I'll write a new, um, a new part. And I'll be like, oh, that's my favorite part of the whole song. Um, hey. yeah, so, oh, so remember how I was saying I might yell tonight? I might, I might yell. So let me go back to the camera guitar. I forgot I'm supposed to be teaching, right? I'm having so much fun. I forget. Um, so, uh, clear all this extra stuff off here. So. I was saying before, comfortable range is down here. This is a doable note, and then I tried to keep my melody here, but I can yell if I sing louder. Yeah. And so maybe my chorus will have to go up here, because usually choruses sound better when uh, choruses feel more chorusy when you're really freaking serious about it, and usually that means singing a little louder and more intensely. Um, I don't know. I don't know how it'll go, but we'll, we'll try it. Um, I'm just preaching the songwriting, you know? Yeah. Let's see. That's kind of cool, actually. Let's try this again. Oh no, if it's all you want, I gotta take it down. Oh, if it's all you want, I can't be wrong again now. There's something cool there. There's something going on that I like. Um, let me. Let me listen to what I have, and then I'll tell you the parts I don't like, and we'll see. We'll see what we can do about that. Let's see. Although something I don't like about Logic Pro at all is sometimes it just like deletes takes in a weird way. So I'm actually going to undo what I just did, and. Uh, it's gonna be f totally fine here. Yeah, okay. You can't see anything I'm doing. I'm just blank staring blankly into a screen. Let's try this again. I, I, there are parts of it I like, but I gotta just fiddle around with it. Um, so, yeah, welcome to me fiddling around. This is what it looks like sometimes to figure out a melody. I'll just keep riffing on it. <laughs> <laughs> my voice is a little tired from <laughs> talking all day, I think. Oh no, I'm out of water. Let me get my water. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh no. There we go. <laughs> oh no. I've been on here. I've been trying. And I. Oh no. If it's all you got, I guess I'll have to go. Try it again. Oh no. If it's all I That'll work. <laughs> um, so here's a cool thing. Um, yeah, by the way, uh, if any of you out there are like, ooh, that was kind of cringe to hear <laughs> so blatantly singing a oh, you know, voice cracking or whatever. This is this happens in songwriting sessions all the time. When you're thinking about these, like, uh, you know, legendary people or, like, um, you know, you're only hearing, like, the polished, finished product. But people do, like, flounder all the time where they're, while they're writing. It's a normal part of the process because as people who we're just used to hearing all the final products, the things people actually wanted to put on their album, you're not hearing... The voice memos where they're like, oh, it's just get kind of some fun. And you're like, oh, can we turn this into a song? Which totally happens. And honestly, if you do that with your own voice memos where you're just like, oh, wait, I got an idea. It's crying, calling, like people put that, like people have that in their phone and they're like, that will be a song one day. It's basically a bookmark for an idea. Um, I, I don't feel bad. By the way, I'm just, I'm just letting you know, if it feels cringe, I'm just letting you know that this is gonna happen to you when you're songwriting too, and it's part of the process. And it, it's honestly, the more you laugh about it, the, the easier it is to write songs. So now I've got this little, this little song seed here. It's 48 seconds, um, and I kind of like it. And what I have here is a little, sometimes I call this like a, a I guess people call it a post-chorus or a chorus outro. Um, and I don't know what to do with it yet. I'm gonna listen to this chorus, and then I'm gonna see how it sounds for the chorus to loop back to the verse just like this and I'll go halfway through I don't I don't need to listen to the whole thing because we just heard it but here we go oh no if it's all I've got all I've got to go California that's honestly sick just like that um I might want to bring the dynamics down a bit by removing the uh, symbols like this, um, and maybe even turning this, these into, um, if we wanted to make it a little more dramatic, we could do something like this, and now we have, um, all I've got, all I've got to go, California, and that can really help, um, that can really help meld a section together instead of doing something like this where you're going, uh, let's see. It's just like a little breathing room. Oh no, if it's all I've got, all I've got to go, California. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of cool to just have that breathing room. It might even be cool to just have a measure of breathing room. Let's see if we do this. All I've got to go. No, two measures is cool. And I like it that way. I was gonna see if I wanna add like bass to it. All I've got to go. I mean, it would be pretty sick to just add that da-da at the front like this. Um, and go like this. Mm -mm. 
Let's see, I think this is gonna be pretty cool actually. You see what I just did? I took the little, these, and I put them at the end of the chorus like this. Oh, I've got to go. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so this is 48 seconds and we've got sort of this whole verse-y thing that's kind of like verse pre-chorus, but it's really, it's really just like a, a verse that's in two parts. It doesn't really matter how how to call it, but um, let's just loop it through here. Now we've got verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and we're up to a minute and 30 seconds. And the only thing I'd really need to do different between these two sections is maybe um, I would want to, to do lower dynamics the second time through, or even part of the second time through. And then, I could go to a bridge, which one of the coolest things here is um, I don't need to write something new. I can just use this as my bridge. And one of my favorite sort of bridge Yeah. I think this alone is enough space to do some kind of a bridge. If I did, if I started with this bum bum, and then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it. Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I know that I want it to be really low, chill, quiet right here, and then you expect a verse to happen, and, it's, and it doesn't happen. And we'll see we'll see what we can do here. I don't know. Yeah. A good building kind of section, though, for sure, whoever just said that. Randy, yeah, you're in. Um, so, I like that. So, let's see. I'll let you see what's going on here, because I'm trying to craft these dynamics. I literally have no clue. Oh, I've got to go. So, I'm going to... Honestly, uh, that bridge could just keep going. I actually really like that bass line I just came up with. And if we did it just three times, that would be, pr that'd be pretty tight. Like, as in um, short and sweet, but... Yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that. I'm, I think I'm gonna do it. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start really quiet, and maybe I'll use my little um, lead guitar thing that was doing this shenanigan. I'll have it double this like the second time, and then we'll build intensity, and then we'll build right back into that chorus riff. That'll be cool. Oh, I've got to go. Oh, I forgot how it goes now. I played something different, but I kind of liked that too. But let's see, which one's more iconic? Holy, Nitro Max. Thank you for the 20 bucks. Nitro Max says, dude, you're the best. You're the best. Thank you. Wow, I appreciate that. And Mark G, 454 gave me 50 bucks? Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. that. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, this bridge is now called uh, the Nitro Max and Mark Bridge. Uh, I want to see which bass line I like better, though. Let's see here. Wow. 
Thank you guys, that's so nice. Uh-oh. There we go. So do I like that better than this? I kind of like that second one. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing uh, A, uh, A, G, F. Uh, that's cool. Uh. Yeah, that's kind of fun. So let's... Oh, I've got to go. There's something about that bass line I want to adjust. It's almost there, and I think it'll be a, a cool bridge, but I'm gonna go... Uh, uh. Uh, so if I'm going A... That could be cool. Yeah, maybe I'll do that instead. Uh, bam. Yeah, I'm gonna tinker with it a bit, but I, I like it. Got to go. And then we got this. I think that'll be nice. And then we'll we'll add the guitar and see how that goes. Um, it's funny to turn down my volume only to unplug and have that thing click. <clears throat> Sweet. Um, and then we'll put ourselves in the right thing here. Um, I think this will really sound good once the, um, once the rhythm guitar is in there, but I'm gonna do the... I'm gonna do the uh, lead guitar first um, because I have a cool idea. I wanna see if it works. I don't know if this will work. I don't. That's kind of sick, actually. Oh, I've got to go. So. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, I'll just play the riff. Uh, oh, I've got to go. Well, okay. Part of the problem is I played the bass line as if it was improvised. So I think I'm gonna scratch the lead guitar until I get the rhythm guitar in there. And I'm gonna go, let's see. What am I doing, what am I doing? I'm gonna do the rhythm guitar next. I'm gonna leave that lead out for now because it's a little wonk. Uh, sometimes if you don't know, if, if you try a few things and they don't work, rather than just trying over and over and over, sometimes it's like, well, I need more support, uh, or it's too open-ended. And if I record a different part, that'll kind of close some doors, forcing me to make some decisions. And if I try a few things and, um, and I feel like I have too many options, I want to go to the place where, it, where it'll clamp down and give me fewer options. Also, I've been going for two hours. I can't believe some of you are still here. Um, I will come back to that riff. I won't forget it. Don't you worry. Kenneth, thanks for hanging out. Thanks everybody for hanging out. I'm having such so much fun. Oh, I've got to go. So let me see how I want to do this. There's something there. So I really like that. I like that. So let me tell you what I'm doing here. Um, there's some sneaky stuff going on. Um, first of all, I'm playing an A minor chord here. And then I'm playing uh, F major seven instead of just an F chord. And then I'm playing a C major seven. And then, here's the coolest thing, I'm playing a D major chord instead of a D minor. Which you can do in a minor key, it's basically called uh, melodic minor. Um, or it's Dorian mode, depending on the situation, but I think I'm gonna keep tinkering with that. Got to go. So now I'm gonna do this. Cool. Let's see how that sounds. Uh, I kind of like that. So you know what I just remembered? Someone earlier, can't remember who, said, hey, if you make a solo in this song, um, I want you to explain what chords you're using. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll play this rhythm part a little simply so that I can um, play a solo over it and explain what I'm doing. Why not? So let's do that. So now I'm gonna... Um, I keep forgetting the chords. This happens. A minor, F, C, D major. 
and at the very end it scoots up to E major. So, oh, I've got to go. so now I'm going to do a little bit. Cool, that's cool. Um, so let's play a solo. And uh, what are we gonna do here? So, should I, I think I'll play a solo first and then I'll talk about what I did on the camera guitar. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Let's see. We'll zoom in on my guitar so you can see the kind of stuff I'm doing here. Um, let me get a nice solo-y tone and a solo-y volume here. And I think... Uh, let's see. Um, before I go, Elvis Titus, cool name, said, um, do you ad lib in a bridge usually? It depends on the bridge. The way I like to think of it is some bridges are lean into the feeling kind of bridges. Usually the lyrics help you figure out if you want to lean into the lean into the feeling of the bridge of the song. So the bridge is like, I'll have more of that, thank you. And then other bridges are a, however, it could be, and that's when you go to like a different place tonally and a different place lyrically. That's kind of the idea. So let's not get too shreddy here, but let's um, figure out which of my four monitors the mouse is. There it is. And then um, I'm going to just get used to this progression for a minute. Um, let's see. guitar is way too loud now all of a sudden so I think what I want to do is I'll, I'll have my little bomb -ba at the at the end oh, I've got to go. and now we're gonna oh uh, yeah yeah <laughs> so that's fun. So there's a couple tricky things going on with this progression. And we'll scoot over to the camera guitar to talk about them. And that's a really dangerous spot for that guitar. I'll put it here instead. Um, so. Woo! And, uh... This is why I'm eventually upgrading to a wireless system here, because I almost tripped. So, here's the deal. Oh, you can't hear that at all. So, when it comes to minor keys, when it comes to soloing in general, you want to focus on chord tones. And if those chords are going by fast, you can get away with not focusing on them as much. But when I'm focusing on my A minor chord, that little intro riff that I did, or I'm trying to accent notes in that chord 
But then the chord shifts to an F chord, which is almost the same. So if I'm going and I want to accent the difference between those chords, I might go right. And then the trick here is um, that it goes to a C chord, which is cool. But then it goes to a freaking D major chord. Um, and at the very end of the song, it actually also goes to um, an E major chord just for such a split second, but it has this this G sharp in it. So I want to try to tag that G sharp just at the last second. And I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewire a couple things so that I can plug this camera guitar into my recording software so that you can see the notes I'm playing while I'm soloing. Is that worth it? I think that's probably worth it. I just have to do some funny looking stuff here. What do I have to do? I have to take this cable. Ha ha ha. And I'll just mute that because we don't need it anymore. And then I got to take this cable. Wow, I'm rewiring stuff live two hours into a live stream. You must think I'm a, a crazy person. This is, I'm having so much fun. So here's what I'm gonna do just for fun so you can kind of see what I'm talking about is I'll try to keep my solo just in here. And what I want you to do is look out for the times when I'm gonna use this note, I'm gonna accent that note, and times when I'm gonna accent that note at the very end. So let's see. I have no idea how We've got some gnarly stuff in here. I'm going to throw a little noise gate on there real quick so that we don't have. I don't need full. There we go. So let's try this. So I'm going to go. And then I would go. That's when I would maybe like solo over or do like a, a part over that final chorus. Um, but that's kind of a fun little solo. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a couple more takes just so you get the idea. Um, yeah, Paul says obviously you know what's going on, but does watching yourself play on the camera guitar help you navigate the fretboard? Yeah, sometimes it's confusing because it's um, sort of backwards. Uh, uh, it, yeah, but it, it's pretty helpful. It's cool. Um, sometimes I get uh, dyslexic or something. I don't. Maybe that's not the right word, but I get messed up. So. So then we got this. It almost feels like it go longer, but I kind of like when a section just isn't it. In my opinion, it's always better for a section to go too short than to go too long. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my part just crash into uh, like a little double chorus or something here. Um, I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'm, I just copied and pasted my previous chorus 
over here. And then I think what I want to do is I'm going to put this vocal part here and I think I see that I could cut my last little phrase, my last vocal phrase. Um, it's going to feel wrong to do this, but I think if I cut this here and pop this here, then I'm going to just sort of bring my solo into the last chorus. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. Maybe this is a good way to end it too. soloing over the final chorus at all but if I had a nice riff that ended that just kind of like bled over into the last section um, yeah if it just cut off right there that'd be pretty cool I think and you know if I was being a perfectionist I would um, I would probably um, do like quite a few more takes, but at the moment I'm just, I'm happy. This is fine. Um, the only thing that isn't fine is I took my last little thing here. There we go. That's kind of a fun outro. <laughs> okay. So. People. Um, thanks for hanging out. Uh, this has been fun. I think, oh, Nitro Max. Thank, thanks for the, the second donation. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, wow, thanks to the... 90 people watching right now. Um, thanks for being here. I'm, I'm having a blast. And um, I got room for a couple more questions if anyone's interested in asking a few more. Um, yeah, uh, I just want to remind you that uh, I do this for a living. I'm, I got an online school it just happens to be hosted on Patreon. It's only eleven sixty-seven a month. Um, I do a weekly live stream, weekly lesson, and um, also check out this scratch paper. Very useful. Just hanging out at the bottom of the page here. If you hit the all notes button, that's the best. Thank you to my patron, Graham, who made this super cool thing. Um, yeah. Anyhow. Um, and I don't see any questions, but, um, yeah. Oh, Elvis. Yeah, that software is something I made. Me and my video editor friend um, made that together. 
and uh, I like it too. It's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, the three W says, at what point do you think it's a good time to join my Patreon? Currently still a beginner. So if you're a complete beginner, I always recommend taking private lessons. Um, but uh, oh, I think my Patreon is a great supplement if you want to learn music theory and you want to learn how to write songs. I just don't recommend it on its own if you're a beginner. It's great supplemental stuff, but um, it's, it doesn't teach you any technique. It doesn't teach you how to play any songs. It just teaches you how to learn music theory, how to make music with it learning how to write bass lines, how to write melodies, how to use recording software, um, and just generally uh, soloing too. There's a lot of soloing content on there. Um, and then I do a, a weekly Q&A with the camera guitar like this where you can ask me any anything you want to ask. Um, Nitro Max, yeah, I made the overlays. Uh, I made all those, uh, all those files myself. Um, all those graphics are made by me personally. Very time consuming. Um, yeah. So, cool. I don't see any other questions. I'll totally, I'll totally answer them if you, if you type them. Um, I'll give you another 30 seconds here if you got any questions for me. Um, oh, Jamie Gale. A Guitar says, great stuff, man. Appreciate your stream. I'm a high school music teacher and I'm constantly referring students to your channel. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That's so nice to hear. Nom, you signed up today. Thank you. That's awesome. Mark G, I live in the greater Seattle area um, in Washington State, the great Pacific Northwest. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I don't see any other questions. So, uh, oh, Galen Maynard says, how often do you do these live streams? On YouTube, rarely. Although I've been going roughly once a month-ish if I feel like it recently, but I also, you know, before a month ago, hadn't done a stream on this YouTube channel in a few years. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Paul, Seattle's the best. I hope you move somewhere kind of nice. Eli Merrill says, how much should I focus on mixing in my production? It really depends, Eli, if you are trying to do a finished product yourself or if you're just trying to get it to a mixing engineer when you're done recording. But doing some mixing as you go helps you get a sense of how well your pieces work together. And um, so it doesn't hurt to do a little bit, but if you're trying to just be creative, um, if the mixing is gonna distract you while you're being creative, don't do any of it. Um, it doesn't distract me because I have just slowly done a little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression. And then sometimes I've had writing sessions where I'm just focused on getting the hang of that stuff. So the mix between creative stuff with a little bit of effects mixed in with lessons just focused on uh, my own personal learning how to use EQ and compression and stuff combined means I've slowly sort of just put that into my writing process. But if it's distracting you from being creative, just focus on being creative. Um, that's what I would say. Uh, let's see. The 3W says, should we expect any new videos similar to your tu tutorials you uploaded long ago? Well, yeah, I put out a new video uh, on soloing just a couple months ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't have one for YouTube in the works at the moment. I'm really digging the live streaming thing. And I'm really focused on um, building out some lessons for my Patreon at the moment. And if you really hate Patreon, part of what I'm working on too is um, some of the core essential uh, courses that I've put a lot of time into. 
uh, I eventually want to make those available for sale separately on my website. So if you don't like subscription services and you don't want to be part of Patreon, um, I will eventually have some courses for sale on my website. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, Elvis. There are not that many beetles in Seattle, but for some reason in my area, there's a lot of these little, um, they're like the flat, um, almost like pentagon shaped beetles. Pretty cool. Um, Randy says, did you have formal training or music schooling? Yes, Randy. I, um, I went, I, I studied music composition. I learned how to write like string quartets and choir music and or orchestra music. And then immediately after college, I, uh, started like a funk soul rock band and never wrote any sheet music ever again. <laughs> but I learned all the theory in college and then I have continued learning on my own since then. Um, Paul says, I'm sub to the Patreon, but I really like these live streams. Well, Paul, I do live streams every week on Patreon. And if you want me to write more stuff on Patreon, let me know. Um, yeah. Daniel says, maybe a dumb question, but do you have a favorite key to write in? Yeah, Daniel. Um, I really like on acoustic guitar, I really like writing in um, like the key of D major. Whoa, wrong direction. Um, I think D is a really beautiful key. Oh, right. I think I think D is a beautiful key. Um, I also love the key of C. If I'm playing like funky soul kind of stuff, I like um, I like the key of C minor. Yeah, um, those are all great keys. Um, and then hook uh, hookstis. Hoaxtis, Hoaxtis says, how important are triads? Um, triads, I would say, are as important as scales. Um, at all of the music I played tonight, uh, I had triads in mind the entire time. Um, triads are, the, the, are how you make chord progressions. And chord progressions, basically a chord progression is the distilled concept of an entire song. Um, if I'm talking to a band about learning uh, a song and jamming with them on stage in a few minutes, the best way I can convey what they ought to do on their instruments is to tell them the chord progression. In other words, to tell them which triads and in which order. So triads are extremely important. Um, and triads are just a specific kind of chord. Uh, it's just a specifically a three note chord. Um, yeah, super important. Yeah. Nitesh says, I've been playing guitar for years now, but I still can't manage to change chords smoothly. Any advice? Yes. I got big advice for you. Um, uh, and that advice is keep this hand going no matter what. Um, a lot of people prioritize this hand and they'll and they'll, they'll wait to strum. And what you want to practice doing is you want to, not even with any chords, just get that strumming pattern going. And then get a chord in there and just keep that going, even if you don't make it to that next chord, even if it takes you half the pattern, like this. If you end up going, uh, it took me a while to get that chord there. Um, it's, it's much, much more important to just keep this hand going no matter what, and it'll train this hand. Um, 
it's kind of like when you have a dog and you just let them do whatever they want. Um, it, you, you're training yourself to just let them do whatever they want. But if you just say, no, I'm going through the door first, or I'm just going to keep walking and you need to get out of the way. Um, don't hurt your animals, of course. I love my dog, but... Um, you know, you got to make sure that your right hand is the boss at all times. That's the rule. Um, yeah. Um, Doc, Mr. Elmore says, do you find yourself using inversions way more playing by yourself on an acoustic, for example? I know I do. Um, I, I play inversions all the time. I don't even think of it as inversions. I just think of it as different chord voicings. Um, but especially if I'm playing with a bass player, I'm not really worried about uh, even keeping the root in there sometimes. So yeah, I love inversions. Okay, it looks like... Oh, Mark G did ask, what is that guitar? This is a cute little student model guitar from the 50s. It's a Gibson ES125T three quarter size. So yeah, uh, usually ES125s are significantly bigger than this. Um, and the T means it's the thin model. And then the, the three quarter size indicates that not only is the body smaller, but the neck is a 22 and a half inch scale length. It's tiny. And I love this thing. Um, and I got it for cheap because the, the neck broke off at one point and someone glued it back on. And it works perfectly. I'm not precious about, you know, perfect, perfect guitars. Um, okay, everybody, thank you for hanging out for two and a half hours. I can't believe that people are still here. Um, I got to get going. Okay, fine. One more question because it's a good one. Low K says, what picks are great for beginners? And the answer is... Um, I think it's great for beginners to have a thick pick because it keeps you from having that death grip. You're forced to, to hold it more gently, and that's nice. Yeah, okay, so um, join my Patreon and, and ask me on a live Q&A and I'll go through everything you want to know about picks. Um, goodbye everyone, take it easy, have a lovely uh, rest of your day or evening wherever you are in the world, and um, Good night.